This is Osiris. Osiris, welcome. Thank you for coming. This is Max. I could not stay. There was a communication problem. Okay. One moment. There's some interference. I can understand why he was having difficulties. Okay. There is some unnatural energies that come through this place. Mm -hmm. Continue. Um, so let's discuss with you your history. Uh, what are you working on these days? What am I working on? I'm not working on anything right now. I'm just doing a lot of learning. Oh. A lot of um, experiencing in the outer realms. I'm not okay. in a physical body at this time. I'm actually in um, stasis in some ways. Th there is a body that is in stasis. That okay. is my, but I am not in that body. <coughs> I am in a spiritual place. Okay. And I used to stay here for a while. So what kind of body is there that you have in stasis? It is a human looking body, but it is actually more Pleiadian in uh -huh. its makeup. Uh -huh. And it is not the same color as you, but it is a blue color. So it is more human Pleiadian in makeup. Is this body related to human history in any way? Past or future? Future, perhaps, but not past. Okay. So, um, I guess um, the main question is, um, is Seth really negative or can we trust him? What? Seth, negative? Seth, your brother, is he negative or can we trust him? Mm. He is like every other being in the universe. He uh -huh. has his good side and his bad side, but uh -huh. he has a temper. That is very, uh -huh. very bad. But basically, he tries to be as positive as possible. Uh -huh. And he has great wisdom and understanding. He has been dealt with harshly with his actions at times. And so uh -huh. he is becoming more reasonable. So when he channeled through Jane Roberts, um, there was a lot of messages which made sense, but his name uh, and reputation uh, put a shadow on his messages. So what, what would you say about how can we take these messages? You must understand that when you are angry, you're a different person. Mm -hmm. So with, the, with these messages, he was not in an angry state. He was in a more benevolent frame of mind. And so that is the kind of messages that have come through in most cases. Some of them are more intellectual, some of them are more spiritual. But in those messages that he brought through, through her, she has, um, he has brought through good informations. Uh-huh, thank you. But he so, was not being negative at that time. I got it. I got it. Um, yeah, so would you recommend inviting him to channeling sessions? He would be an interesting channel person, for he is a wise and transcendent being at uh -huh. this point. He has learned to, to transcend through the different dimensions and bring information in many levels to humanity. Wow. Okay, so we'll we'll invite them him some someday. I just wasn't sure it was recommended. He like will not I... harm you. He will not harm you, and he will not be any nuisance whatsoever. Yeah, because when I invited Lucifer, there was some uh, commotion, and I, I realized it's not good to invite. Uh, too negative of uh, energies. 
correct. Lucifer could not come in his true identity because he could not come through this channeler in his true light. He had to filter himself into a more positive being, which was very difficult for him. I see. Now, um, what was your role in Egypt, historical role in Egypt? What was your mission and did you accomplish it? There were many things. We brought information, technology. We were traders. We were leaders. We had many things happening at once. Uh, the, the earth was a neutral territory where we could do some of our business, and that made it a very positive place for many to come. Mm -hmm. There was no conflicts here between any species, and there was a great deal of technology here, and they could be comfortable here, and so ambassadors from many parts of the galaxy could come here and do their bidding and trading in and uh, do councils and things of that nature and not have any interference with negativity. Uh-huh. And what did you personally um, um, contribute? I was the one that was in charge of keeping everyone in alignment and uh -huh. bring the right people to this planet and having them exit at the right time as well. Uh -huh. I was pretty much in charge of scheduling uh, the transports. I got it. Um, so was it before uh, the Pyramid of Giza or uh, after? Oh, after, definitely. Um, so last time we spoke to Akhenaten, no, we spoke to Anubis, and we placed the Pyramid of Giza construction about between 23,000 years ago and 5,000. I think it was closer to maybe 15, 20,000 years ago. Yes, it was already built but by the time I was there. I'm listening now to the lectures on Egypt, and the speaker is adamant that there was no population to build that pyramid. He has a archaeological uh, uh, data shows that uh, the population of Egypt grew only after 5,000 years ago. So 15,000 years ago, there was not, uh, not enough people to build that pyramid. Correct. What can you say? Well, there was some incorrect information that Anubis gave last time, perhaps because of these in these odd energies. It was I that killed Os uh, well, Seth that killed me, not not Hermes or whoever he said. But, okay. But yes, there's some inaccurate information out there. Okay. But the pyramids were transportation areas. They were also refueling areas. They were communication areas. They were conference areas. There were many things going on there before the population started to grow because okay. we, we needed a neutral area for these things to happen in. Okay. So, uh, Giza Pyramid is pretty perfect, and there is a couple more pyramids which were unsuccessful. And the speaker says, the historian says that first were unsuccessful pyramids because um, they needed to improve the technology, and then they built the successful one. Is it the proper dating? Or is it the other way around? First it was a, the Giza, uh, Giza Pyramid, and then uh, Heops, Cheops Pyramid, and then Others were just a failure to reproduce it. Actually, the pyramids were built in the order that history describes them. Cheops was the first and the most powerful. The others were made for other reasons. Cheops was the main uh, power center 
was the main uh, exit and enter place. The other areas were made not for not for those reasons, but for but were made to house uh, some of the equipment, warehousing, and things of that nature uh, in, underneath of them. Now, the pyramids themselves were used for ex extra energy and storage of energy so that uh, everything could run at a proper pace and we could bring people from very far parts of the galaxy to this area. So they were more power storage areas than anything else. And then they started uh, making um, uh, sarcophagus and uh, burial chambers for pharaohs and pyramids. Is it, how is it connected to the idea of uh, using pyramids for other purposes? Pyramids were not used as burial chambers, not at all. You will find in a burial chamber, burial chamber that there is always an entrance that is specific, specific to mm -hmm. a burial entrance. And that's the period pyramids are not that entrance. Okay. Um, they have a, a doorway and an arch and different things that happen uh, with burial chambers that are not part of the pyramids. But they found sarcophagus Cophagus is at many of the pyramids. One yes. this Yes, but not in them. Inside, inside. No, they did not find them inside so much as outside. Outside of the pyramids. But um, there was some there was a couple, but that was not what they were intended for. Uh there was um and then uh, the entrance is uh, somewhere maybe half of the way to the top, and then it goes somewhat down, and yep. then there is a big room, and it had a sar sarcophagus, uh, an empty sarcophagus, and then there is a, uh, an empty place that reaches very, very far to the top, yes. like a, a these pipe. Were places, these were transport places. Perhaps okay. the, uh, the sarcophagus looks like a sarcophagus, but uh, actually some of the, the things that look like sarcophaguses are actually healing chambers or, or transfer chambers where people will get in and be beamed to other places and, um, and sometimes healed within okay. these places. But uh, did they find bodies in those? Only in later ones. Yes, bodies were not in all of them because they were not all burial areas. Okay. So at which point uh, the humans took over? It looks like at some point uh, there were uh, more like alien um, rulers and then at some point there were, uh, the humans tried to imitate the aliens and it was uh, more like... Um, yes, it was rather funny actually. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, they tried to, they saw, some humans saw certain things that they were not supposed to, or some humans were in positions where they could see as the highest, highest of the alien uh, lead, leaders, they saw things that they could not possibly understand, and so they would transfer that information to the human population and and they would try to explain it away uh, by their their religious beliefs and things of that nature and so it became that they tried to imitate these beings us us as beings because we were godlike to them so they tried to imitate us because we were more like gods than uh, what they thought. And they, their idea of God changed because of us. Mm -hmm. So the, there is a tunnel going north, uh, uh, pointed to the North Star from some pyramids. Uh, what's the point of that? What's the, what's the purpose? The 
the channels in the pyramids <laughs> go back to when they were made are pointed to the areas of the sky that they were transporting people to, the Sirius and the Orion areas. Those were the two major transport areas. If you, it was like an airport. You would transfer to, you would send them to Orion and then Orion would send them to some other place if it, if it was necessary. But the big areas of transport were the three stars in, or, in the Orion's belt and the Sirius area. <laughs> so therefore, that's where these shafts were pointing to so that the uh, make a very fast and precise uh, transfer to these areas. Um, so the Sphinx um, has the, the marks as if it was uh, covered with water, partly covered with water. Can you explain that? A what? Sphinx, the Sphinx figure, the sculpture of the Sphinx. Yes, and what about it? Is, is covered with, uh, has the marks of uh, being partly covered with water, like halfway through there is a, a trace of water, like being uh, as if it was halfway in the water. Can you explain why, how it could it happen? Um, that it was flooded, you mean? Yep. It, they put, there is some truth to the fact that it was being used as a supply center and that some, there was a, 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 I'm not sure how to say it. It was, there was a couple beings that needed water for their, uh, because they could not survive without it. This is where the meeting place for those individuals were. And also that Sphinx has changed its identity more than once. But this was one of the places where um, the uh, Whale and Dolphin Alliance would meet. So did they claim a swimming pool there, or was it like the whole area covered with water? The because whole area. Looked, okay. The, the whole area was covered in water. For how long? For a brief period of time. Wow. It was enclosed, actually, in that area. Okay. Um. So, what was your species? Um, your your personal. To which, to, to which race did you belong? I belong to the Syrians. So you want a blue avian? I was not a blue avian, no. Aha. Uh -huh. Anubis I was. Aha. Uh -huh. But if you look at what I look like, <laughs> I just do not look like a blue avian or any of the other ones. I did not have a non-human head. I had a human structure. How long? Were, how tall were you? About six foot five. Uh huh. In your in your measurements, I was Thank tall. You. Uh huh. And Isis? Isis was tall as well because she was my she was a part of the serious race as well. Mm hmm. And Orion. She was actually half Orion and half Syrian. Who? Huh? She was she was sort of a half hybrid because she was half hybrid uh, Orion and Syrian. I see. And um, she was your wife? Yeah, she was. Yes. Okay. And Seth? Seth was a a different kind of being altogether. Yes. So he was your brother? He was my brother, and, but he also was a hybrid. Oh. <clears throat> what race was he? Well, he was part Syrian and part Orion, and there was part of him that was also blue avian. Oh, gosh. Did he have a beak? Did he have a beak? No. I see. 
We did not represent. There was only a little blue avian in him, uh -huh. but it was. It's very hard to explain how that came about. But he was uh, a hybrid child and was created to be so. So, what was his position? He was he was the knower of all things in some ways. Okay. He had a great, in, he had a great uh, wisdom and understanding. However, he also had a great temper. But he was a wise, very wise person, and I can understand why he why he was upset many times. Things just were not correct. So. Uh... Did he kill you, as uh, the history tells? Yes. Uh-huh. And uh, were you reassembled? Yes. Uh, which technology was used? Uh, from which race to reassemble you? The Syrian. Uh-huh. Uh, in the Syrian space, there was a place where I went to be reassembled. OK. And how did they put back the soul? The soul never had, had not left at that point. Oh, I see. It was uh, one of those. It's it was because of the way that everything happened. I was in a I was in stasis. He destroyed me and froze me in place. Uh huh. I think he, the. the he knew that Isis would try to, to put me back together, and he made it so that she would. Uh, the story, I think, goes that he, he killed you twice, and second time he dispersed your pieces and she assembled them. Was it like that? Yes. <clears throat> uh-huh. And did she... But he also... But... <coughs> the thing is... <coughs> You have to understand it, why he killed me in the first place. Okay. So, because if I was dead, there was no way that they could use any mind-altering uh, technology to get information from me. There was okay. some of them, there was those there that needed uh, the information that I had because I knew exactly where everyone was sent. Okay. And they, they were trying to find certain people. And for this, he had to destroy me and take me apart so that they could not get that information. Oh, wow. So, but ISIS uh, didn't like that result. And uh, there was, a, was there a disagreement between ISIS and him? Yes, she does not, did not like the, the manner in which he had, destroyed me and she it made it more difficult for her to reassemble me so uh but he seth had to make sure that they could not get this information and they were uh, that it was a hundred percent unlikely that they would get it i'm sorry for asking the question again but i forgot the answer so he wasn't your brother well yes he was he was okay all right, so um, then uh, did she get pregnant and, uh, from you and... Uh, that uh, was her. Yep, and uh, you, you, your, your, your child was Horus, right? Yes. Okay, got it. Horus is a very interesting... He was a blue avian. And oh. how could he be our child? Because we... Uh, had put that DNA within her as well. Uh huh. So who was his uh, avian father? Father. Ra. Oh. So can you tell a bit about Ra? I'm not sure how is he related to all of you. He is the sun god from, uh -huh. uh, but he was not there on the planet at that okay. time. We okay. had established a communication and DNA transfer. Okay. So, but he was a leader now as well. 
there was many that came to the planet at different periods of time to take over leadership as sort of a governor or controller of all the things that were happening here. And um, Ra was one of those. And he could, I was in charge of transport of all different beings coming and going. And so the information that I had was very important to some of those that came to the planet for they were looking for those that were seeking refuge. And probably some of them were uh, po police, uh, uh, intergalactic police and things of that nature. So this, to keep the planet completely neutral, that is why no information could be transferred of that nature from this area. Um. Perfect. Uh, now it, it is much more clear. <clears throat> um, now, so did Ra come later? Because Ra was on Earth at some point, right? Yes, he was. Was it later time or earlier time? I believe it was earlier. Oh, I see. Now, did your activity uh, involve some other countries? Atlantis uh -huh. and, and the nearby countries of, they did not have the names they have now. They had different names back then. So let me ask about Atlantis. So Atl it was before the, uh, the final destruction of Atlantis? Yes. Ah, that makes a big difference. Yeah. So, so the Great Pyramid was built before the destruction of Atlantis? Yes. And um, <clears throat> uh, our timing for the Great Pyra for the destruction of Atlantis is 23,000 years ago. Is it about right? That's correct. Ah. And the Sphinx was there, too. The Sphinx was there, yes. There was actually two Sphinx. One it was destroyed. The other one still stands. I see. <clears throat> well, uh, did the Sphinx have a technological meaning which could be important now? Does, yes. Is there a technology hidden? What is it? There's, under the paw of the Sphinx, there is many documents that uh -huh. have not been uncovered. Also, under the, under the Cheops and the Sphinx, there are ships there as well, buried very deeply. Okay. Wonderful. <sighs> Let me think. Uh, so, which other countries? Um, uh, so, what what was happening in India at that time? So, it is like uh, twenty something thousand years ago. Was India already populated? There was population in India, but it they were not established as they are now and there was some the uh there were some that were there doing the sumerian tablets giving uh -huh. information uh that would be opened much later and still has not completely been opened yet i see so in india were there uh, homo sapiens or was it before the creation of homo sapiens there was the creation of Homo sapiens at that time, yes. It was just, they were just newly created. So the population of India was not humans? Not all. There were some humans there, yes. And who were the rest? Those that would uh, inhabit the area that were from different other places, such as Orions, Syrians, Anunnaki. The Homo sapiens were... What? What? I think he is gone. I'm sorry, I'm, I... I'm coming back in a second, just a second. Oh. Just a second, I'm, I'm coming back in a second.
It's just an uh, interruption which is easy to fix. I'm back. So the Anunnaki, what, what, how did Anunnaki look like? They looked like humans, but they, many of them preferred to have wings. Oh, they, wow. They looked rather human. But some of them had wings, which, would, which made them different, a little different. These were the greater of the Anunnaki. They were the privileged, such as Anki, Enki, I think, mm -hmm. and, Anil, and Anu, and those ones. Mm -hmm. They had their wings with them. Mm -hmm. They were actually not real wings, but they could be uh, put on, and they looked actually quite real. Oh, so there's a technological one? Yes. <clears throat> uh, did Anunnaki uh, have the ability to shapeshift? There was some that did, yes. Uh, was it natural or uh, technological? Technology. Oh, I see. Uh, were they reptilians too? No. Actually, oh. there are many report that the Anunnaki were reptilian, but they are not reptilian. They created a form of reptilian, which they call, they named after themselves, but they also, they were also creators of many uh, variations in species. They did a lot of, of uh, <coughs> DNA splicing and creating of different kinds of beings. And they did create a reptilian kind of being. I see. So um, is Rama, Rama and Sita, the Indian gods, were they uh, there at the time? Though some of them were from Orion, some of them were from Sirius and other places. Uh, there actually was a little bit of an Octorian a uh, group there. There was some. They went more to the Oriental side, the or the into the Orient, and uh, they were more in that area. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. There were uh, some reptilians of, at that time, but they were actually more much farther north. Oh, wow. Yeah, I just wonder what happened in Russia at that time. So it's like 20-something uh, thousand years ago, still at the time of Atlantis, what was happening in Russia? They were having a... Actually, that's one of the battlegrounds. There were some aliens that were hiding on Earth, and there was a great battle in that area. Uh -huh. where they had some battles, and actually some battles came all the way down to India. Uh, there was one great big uh, battle there where a, uh, a nuclear weapon was set off. Uh -huh. and they have found the remains of that now. Uh -huh. But uh, in, in Russia, in the Russian area, you will find many, uh, as they uncover some of the areas in Russia, they will find that the ground is scorched in many places uh -huh. because of the different battles that were happening there. Right. Got it. So, um, so how long did you rule? Oh, no, no. How long did, were you on, on the planet? Uh, when did you leave? I was there around, well, I went back and forth. Okay. Uh, I was there and um, my replacement when I went on vacation, so to speak, okay. uh, was there. Um, and I would go back and forth for about 20 years. Uh -huh. before, um, I, before I decided to stay, actually it was a little longer than that, maybe 25 or 30 years. But I had a reputation there, and I did come back at a different time 
and stayed for a short period of time as well for about five years. So there was a breakup of, I, I was there for 25 years and then left for a while and came back for another five or so. And, um, um, but it was because I did my job very well and I was the best at what I did. Uh, did you visit Atlantis? Yes, I did get to visit there a couple times, but uh -huh. we were inland. We were farther inland. We were not at. I was not at Kiops um, at all the time. I was at different places. So we trained. Oh. Mm -hmm. and so, but um, when when I was killed, I was not at Kiops. In fact, they they took me away to from the pyramids to kill me because I uh, they were really hunting me down. So uh, they had to destroy me then. So um, you name the the name Kiot. What's it? What is that? Kiops is the name of. Oh, the Kiops. Group. Okay, but Atlantis wasn't in, in Egypt. It was elsewhere. So did you visit the the main island of Atlantis? Yes, of course. They had transport machines there, and I was able to transport people over to uh, Atlantis. Uh -huh. It was a very popular vacation area. So how did you like it? I loved it. It was very calm and peaceful. They had many great beaches and great areas for relaxation and meditation. It was a very... Uh, the especially the um, w w the western side, the southwestern side was very beautiful and tropical. It was a, a wonderful place, and okay. the uh -huh. the, uh, the areas in the Mediterranean were also beautiful. So it many there were many places of attraction. What was the political structure there? It, it, it was run by governors. Uh -huh. And uh, there was probably seven or eight governors on Atlantis. And the next highest political status was priest and priestess. They uh -huh. were second in command there, really. The governors were first, and the priests and priestesses were second. And there were several groups of priests and priestesses. Some there was a Lumerian group. Uh, there was the there was three other groups of priests and priestesses. Some were in fives, and some were in groups of twelve. But they were there to uh, represent their different religions and things. This was very important, spirituality and meditation and things of that nature were very important to the Atlanteans. How much technology did you see? What? How much technology was there? There was a lot of technology there, but it was not in the wide open. They, uh -huh. It was not a cluttery looking place. They used technology to move from one place to another. They use technology to build. They use technology to uh, keep uh, things um, safe, the domes and things of that nature. But it was uh, also, they use technology to uh, create uh, uh, some of their art and some of the, the statues and things of that nature. So, it, was was there slavery? Uh, yes, there was. And uh, who were the who were the uh, slaves and who were the masters? Well, that was part of the religious order. You became a slave, which would be like a monk, mm -hmm. but they were more uh, in. Uh, they were more in service to the governors, the councils, and the priests and priestesses. But it was a voluntary. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, that they were and 
captured and made uh, slaves. Oh, they, they volunteered for this position because it was a privilege to serve in that capacity, and th they believed that their reward would be great. And what kind of rewards were there? That would be like in the afterlife. They believed their afterlife reward would be great. I see. So you, you, you could apply and uh, have an interview for a slave and be rejected? Actually, only the only people that were rejected for slavery were those that had uh, what you might call a criminal record. I see. Um, so did you witness the destruction of Atlantis? I witnessed, uh, no, I did not witness the destruction of Atlantis. I, what witnessed, uh, I witnessed destruction of some uh, peoples because of certain uh, belief systems, but I did not witness the destruction of Atlantis. Uh, did Atlanteans create mermaids? Mermaids were there before, are actually alien groups. There's alien groups that are mermaids. So they were there uh -huh. outside and helpful to Atlantis. Yes. Uh, how was the sexual activity in Atlantis? We hear the rumors that they had uh, very weird uh, extra, you know, genetically engineered sex. Um, there was a lot of, sexuality was very spiritual, and so uh -huh. it was very tantric in uh -huh. some senses, and in other places it was very uh, co communal. Uh -huh. There was communities of sexual activity, but uh, there was also the a very private sexual activity, but it was all not, everything was approved of if they were approved with each other. I see. But there was nothing striking on the streets. No, not in the streets usually, no. Uh-huh. That was pretty much forbidden. I see. I see. Um, our time comes to the close of the session. Um, I wonder if there are any other things which I didn't ask which you wanted to share. Actually, no. I I I share what you ask, and that is okay. what I. Okay. All right. So, um, uh, is there any um, can can you give us some sort of uh, maybe an example of your language which you use in Egypt? Of some course. prayer, prayer or a blessing or something of that sort. Oh, you've heard it many times, I'm sure, but I will oh. give it to you. Okay. Ay owa mushi yatowa nanika krashanza mochia ira umbiki yakowa anduti tisa suko wawagi anjekuti nando kara kakiwiti kanzingyupwa. Thank you. So, can you translate? Yes. That was a prayer for the sun. Let us uh -huh. bow down and worship the bright light of life so that we may continue in all wisdom and knowledge and in the understanding that darkness does not exist within it. Oh, and what language was that? That was a combination of Egyptian and Blue Avian. Wow. Blue Avian had a lot to do with some of the Egyptian language. Uh, can you give an example of Syrian language? Yes, Syrian language was a lot softer. One moment. Tia, Soravia, Rendivisa. Shuvrian Zanzaria Karevan Zorin Zanjir and Tiarib Hugh. 
Yes. Could you translate? Yes. The air is filled with your essence and we breathe it in so that we may have life and that we may know that you are with us internally, externally, and all through our day. Oh, wow, That's, that sounds great. Um, uh, I thank you for, for the interview and um, I invite you to come more often. I think um, this information channel is very helpful and uh, you have the knowledge which we have, uh, which we were missing. So that was very helpful. Thank you very much. Much love to you as this one would say. Much love. Hello? Hey, Jim, welcome back. Ooh, hello. Ooh. 